Hello there, and thank you for joining me today. I'm Doris Venter of Library Arts, and I'm here to present to you the Barbary Lion Drawing Program. Now here's the inspiration for our lion head today. It's a photograph of a roaring lion. Well, I'm gonna show you my lion, but wait a minute. Something is not the same about these two lions. One has got his mouth wide open and one is calm, cool, and collected. That is until you expand the drawing and really see a fun lion mouth. It's a fun card to make. It's a great uh, drawing to practice your skills in observation. So join me today as I walk you through how to draw this lion and transform it into a roaring lion. Hope you'll join me. Okay, let's get started on our Barbary Lion Folded drawing project. So what we're going to do is we're going to establish this folded lion by preparing our paper for the drawing. So the first thing we're going to do is you're going to need a sheet of white copy paper. It's just eight and a half by 11, the typical paper you might put into your printer at home. Okay, so let's get started by doing just some simple folding before we start the drawing. I want you to take the bottom half of your paper and fold it all the way up to the top so that you have a paper that's folded perfectly in half. And then I want you to use your fingers to press it firmly down like that. All right, now you have two halves of the paper, one down here and one on top. I simply want you to take that top sheet, here's my finger on the fold, and I want you to bend that top sheet back to the fold you just made and fold it one more time, just like that. Now you're gonna be ready to start your drawing. The top of your lion head will be here, the mouth will be here, and then we'll be able to open it up for the next part and draw the interior of the lion. All right, let's get started in the next step and I'll show you how to draw the lion. Go ahead and fold your paper now. Okay, welcome back. Now we're gonna go ahead and get started with drawing. You're gonna need a pencil and just have an eraser either at the uh, end of your pencil, like I have, or I actually like to keep a separate eraser nearby. And we're gonna keep your paper folded just like we did in the previous step. And now we're gonna start to draw lightly in pencil the lion's face. So let's start at the top. We're going to find approximately the middle of your paper and about an inch below from the top, we're gonna start with what looks like we're almost making the McDonald's arches. We're gonna make a big hill here and a big hill there. We're gonna come out nice and wide, come in and down. Do the same thing again, we're gonna come out nice and wide, come in and down. Alrighty, now let's go ahead and add two eyes to our lion's face. And these eyes are gonna be sort of triangular shaped. Like this, and a triangle, kind of a long triangle at a slight diagonal, like that. I'm gonna put a circle in the middle of the eye. I'm going to add a nose right here, and the nose is just gonna be a simple triangle like that. I'm gonna take two lines up at a curve going towards the eye like this, and then I'm going to bring another curve right into the corner of the eye like that. Now these two lines are gonna to lead to basically what forms that sort of muzzly like shape on the lion. So we're gonna come out, big curve, come in and stop at the fold. So we're gonna come out, big curve, and then come down and stop at the fold. So the two should be pretty similar. This one looks to be a little bit high, so I can go back and just lower that a little bit. Alrighty, now right here from the um, nose tip. Just gonna fix that nose line a little bit. 
you know that a lion's mouth is sort of like a cat's mouth. You have that line that comes down, and then you have that kind of smiley look on the cat's face, right? We're going to come down here. We're going to uh, continue that muzzle shape. It's going to come down and around, just, just down and around a little bit where the mouth is. And then it's going to come in, dip a little bit, and then come back up again, just like that. All right. Now, we're also going to um, bring the muzzle to connect with the mouth and connect with the mouth right there. And now we have time to add some whiskers. And I'm just going to put three sort of dark holes where the whiskers are going to come out. So we have one, two, three, and one, two, three. Now you basically have the lion's face. Let's now bring the mane in. So we're gonna start up here above this side and above this side, just curving out at a slight diagonal. We're gonna come out and come in. We're gonna come out and come in. So that's just the start of the top of the mane. Let's add another wave. We're gonna go out and in and out and in. Let's do it again. Out, come down to the fold. Go out, come down to the fold. And now we're going to continue downwards and up. Downwards and up. Here we go. We're going to start moving the mane inward a little bit. So now we're going to go downwards and up. Downwards and up. And now we're going to bring, almost to a point, that mane so that it can kind of swirl into a corner ending right there. Now below the mane, in fact, I'm just going to move this over a little bit so it's a little more centered with the face. Let me just do that really quick. Let's move that curve just over a little bit. That looks a little more centered with the mouth. Okay, now right below the chin sort of muzzle, we're gonna have that bearded part. So we're gonna come out with a curve and we're just gonna add a jaggedy line to suggest a kind of rough bearded shape there. Now the next thing we're gonna do is just um, add a few lines to kind of indicate there's some flowing of the fur. Put a couple here, maybe one there, maybe one there. Now, once you have all that, what I suggest you do is get a nice sharp marker, a nice sharp black marker, and just go ahead and outline. Keep the paper folded. I think that's important because it's going to help you see how we're going to put it all together in a moment when we do the coloring inside the lion. Here, here, hole there, hole there, Gonna do the mane. And you might see a few of my pencil lines in here, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to go back and erase those after I finish my marker. And that's a really easy way to just get rid of that. Because you need that pencil line so that you can do your drawing, make those mistakes, erase them as needed. And as we say in art, we say, go light till you get it right, then go darker with a marker. So that's what I'm doing here. So, oh, and I have one more line there. 
Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and color in the nose, a nice dark black. I'm gonna make some pupils, very large pupils in his eye. And I'm gonna go ahead and take my eraser and erase any pencil lines, and then I'll be ready to take you through the next step of drawing the inside of the lion's mouth. Okay, get your drawing done, get it outlined in marker, and then you'll be ready for the next step. Okay, welcome back. So we have done the upper and lower portion of the lion's face, and now we're going to add the inside of his mouth, the big jaws to make that dramatic folding happen, unfolding happen when we use uh, finish our card today. So we're gonna first of all um, continue the jaw line um, from the top to the bottom of the mouth. So we're gonna take a line, go out at a curve, back to pencil again. We're gonna take a line, go out at a curve. We're gonna take it down, 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 all the way to the black edge here. And go in and down, 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 all the way in here. Now we're gonna finish that muzzle. We're going to take it, go around and up, go to the end here of that smiley face, go around and up. Now we're going to create sort of an inner gum line, if you will, like you have the gums on your mouth. This will be like the inner gum line of the lion's mouth just echoing the line you just put down. We're gonna establish some sharp teeth here. And again, just jaggedy teeth, this is just a kind of ferocious lion. And on either side, we're going to add a long, sharp tooth here and a long, sharp tooth here. It makes it very dramatic, doesn't it? Now, next, we're going to establish some teeth on the bottom. Same thing, we're gonna come up a little bit, do some jaggedy teeth here. And then we're going to establish one long sharp tooth here and one long sharp tooth there. Now behind the teeth, just like you and I, we're gonna have a tongue. So we're gonna draw a line that goes across like that. This is the tongue behind the lion's teeth and we're just gonna put a line down the center. So that's basically the interior of the mouth. You have the sharp teeth below, you have the two tusky teeth here and the two tusky teeth there. Now we're going to continue the lion's mane where we left off. So just like before, we're, we're just gonna bring this in a little bit. We're gonna curve down and in, down and in. Come around the other side, down and in. And I'm gonna move this up for you. We're gonna come down and in and keep repeating that pretty evenly on both sides until you come to the point where you can connect the mane to the existing mane that we started. And remember these lines we put here at the top to give the kind of flowing lines to the mane? Looks like I need another one right here, by the way. We're gonna add some flowing lines, sort of those S-curve shapes, right here. Okay, now we're gonna stop here. I want you to go over this again with the black marker, and then we'll come back and discuss color. For the color, you might want to use um, Sharpie markers or colored pencils. Those are what I recommend the most for this. If you don't have that, of course, you could bring crayons in. But let's stop here, I'll let you do your black marker over this, and then we'll start talking about color. Welcome back. We have finally finished our lion drawing from top to bottom. And you know if you just take the bottom up now and bring it up, you're going to see your lovely lion and ready for coloring. So we're going to do that now. Okay, so let me open it up and we'll get started. Um, I'm using color pencil today and I have selected a number of golden yellow um, 
colored pencils because it makes me think of that lion face that we looked at at the very beginning of the program and all the lovely golden colors that the lion has. And I actually sometimes like to keep that picture nearby just as a reference to remind me of, of what he looks like. I've also picked out a bunch of browns to add some brown tones. I have some blues, blacks, greens, and dark red for the sort of the, that dark cavity of the mouth here. And then I have some colors for the tongue and a color I think I'll use for the background. But I'm gonna basically stick with beyond the black marker, I'm gonna pretty much stick with a color pencil. All right, so why don't we start here at the top of the head and I'm gonna put down, you know, lightly to begin with, just, you know, a light golden yellow. And what I like to do is I like to build up my color slowly. So I don't like to feel like, you know, I put it down heavy, like as dark as a marker would go. And then I don't have much I can do beyond that. So I like to put a light layer down and sort of build more color into it. So I might bring this other yellow on top. Like this. I might bring a little bit of brown in there. Not too heavy, but just a little bit of the brown to make it feel like the lion's mane definitely has some brown in it. And you see how I just slowly built that up? maybe getting a little more intense here because in the lion's face, he does have that kind of intensity of his growling when his mouth is open. So again, I'm just gonna go down the sides, maybe into the mane a little bit, keep it kind of light for now. Not putting a lot of pressure because I know I don't wanna come back and I'll wanna add more. So I'm just going to uh, lightly, lightly, Put that color in and this color right here is called uh, orange spanish orange so it's kind of a golden rod if you ask me it's not really a bright orange i'm going to come over to the other side do the same thing just lightly blocking in the main we're definitely gonna come back and do the face in a minute, but I wanna lightly block in the mane. Now let's take a look at that face. It's sort of brighter right near the nose and darker on the bridge of the nose. The bottom of the nose is lighter. The top of the nose is darker and it gets more intense around the eyes. So let's take a look at that. So if I even start with the same yellow that I was just using a moment ago, to tie it into the fur. And again, just very, very lightly. We know right here, where I am right near the teeth, that's supposed to be very light there, so I don't wanna put a lot of color or pressure on that part. And I'm not gonna to touch the teeth yet. Again, just gonna lightly, lightly put that in. Let's bring some of that brown, that intense brown right ear on the top of the nose. Again, not putting too much pressure. I'll bring some of that reddish brown because it really is a reddish color that goes with the lion. And then maybe going back in with the gold too to kind of bring that out. And I'm just starting to layer a little dark, more darkly around the lion's face. I want to bring a lot of attention to the face. Don't want it to go all to the mane. I'm gonna take a little bit of this brown right above the eyes. It gets kind of intense, but there is a piece of the eye that's very light right near the eye. So I'm just gonna get a little bit of intensity near the eye, but not on the eye. Okay, come over here. Again, building up some lighter brown on top of the pale yellow. Getting a little darker as I move out. And the muzzle, right near the muzzle, is dark with that golden yellow.
but then it gets paler on the muzzle itself. So let's put some of that more intense color here towards the outside, bring the brown in again, like I just did a moment ago. So you see how we're bringing more attention and detail to the lion's face as opposed to the mane, because that's really, you know, this is really what it's about. It's really about his face. So I'm gonna go over this yellow with a kind of a peachy tone. So again, keeping it light, but not too light. And I would say actually right near the side of the nose, it's gonna be more intense coming down and lightening there. And now in the eye itself, if you want to capture that kind of golden color, you can get that golden eye. But around the eye, it's actually quite dark. So I'm gonna actually take my color pencil and it's not really a lot of white there. It's actually a lot of darkness. But I'm not gonna to go too heavy with the black. I just wanna give it a hint of shadow there. And again, just a little color under the eye because it seems like it's lighter around the eye for some interesting reason. Just the way, you see how it's lighter here and right here? That's why I'm doing that. Okay, now let's look at these teeth for a minute. I think this is very interesting. Those are not white teeth. Those are pinkish, yellowish, orange teeth. So we're actually gonna get into the teeth and we're gonna put a little beige there. Just lightly, lightly, lightly. I'm gonna put in a little bit of the pink, because I have some pink here too. Remember, this guy's a meat eater, so he's definitely gonna have, you know, some remnants of maybe his hunting on his teeth. Uh, right here, this gum line is super, super dark. I'm actually gonna go back and use my black marker to color that in rather than use my uh, color pencil. I think I'll get the intensity I want a little bit better if I use my black marker. And right around um, the teeth here, I'm gonna bring some of that black down and some of that black is gonna go right up to the teeth. And all the way up this side here. Really intense, like black gums. Alrighty, now let's think about the inside of the mouth. And the inside of the mouth is really quite dark and shadowy. So we're gonna do a lot of darkness up here, then we're gonna gradually lighten up as we get to the tongue. So let's start with, actually, rather than a, um, a black, I'm gonna kind of put a little light purple down. Purples and blues are often used for shadow. And I'm just gonna lightly put in this purple to kind of shade in the cavity of the mouth. That's that big shadowy part of the picture here. And I'm going to layer it with a nice, this is called uh, blue indigo. And I think that's a good color to go with. And then I'm gonna do black where I want it super dark. So I'm putting this blue indigo, again, to show the shadowy part. And you see how it makes the teeth pop too by going really quite dark here? Because we want it to feel like, ooh, that is some dark cavity inside that lion's mouth. Like, I don't want to go near that lion. It would be too frightening, right? So we're going to come down here. We're going to lighten up just a tad as we get down to the bottom here where the tongue is. Just lighten up a little bit. Still keeping it dark right above. So again, blue, purple, those are good colors for shadows versus just regular old black. So if you're doing a pencil drawing, of course, you can use the black of the pencil 
um, to capture that. And then I'm actually going to take my black now and I'm going to put some black just near the top part and gradually again fade it away as it gets down to the tongue. Because again, I don't want it to be super, super dominant, so I'll just lighten the pressure as it comes down here. Great. So let's take a look at the tongue. The tongue has pinks, pale pinks and whites, so we're going to start with some pale pink here. And then we're going to work our way up to some oranges, some reds, because that too should get darker as it goes back. So we'll put a little bit of a, let's put a different color pink on top of what I have. I think I'm going to try a little bit of this. It's a little more intense. Try a little bit of red as we get higher. Again, layering these colors so that they kind of go together. You don't want it to feel like sort of an ombre effect with reds. I'm trying to get that sort of ombre effect. But to really capture that darkness, I'm actually going to bring the same, oh, not, not the purple, I want the indigo. The, oh, here it goes, the blue indigo right on top of the red in the background to make that red disappear a bit into the cavity of the tongue. So we're going to bring that blue on top, really lightening it as it goes down, but keeping it a little more dark at the top like that. Great. Now we're ready to uh, tackle the lower teeth using the same technique. They're not pure white teeth at all. They've actually got sort of a red and pinkness to them. This is going to be the inside lower portion of the gum, and I'm going to continue that with the black. Should have done that before. And I'm going to bring some pink into those lower teeth again. Like we did further. Helps them blend into the tongue a little bit too. So there you have this great cavernous mouth. Now, why don't we go back up here to the mane. And again, we're just going to do some light colors like this. Really blocking them in. And this you can do quickly, because you're just basically putting down a foundational color. You don't have to be super precious about this part. I'm gonna come over here, do a similar thing. That mane needs a lot of work, actually, because we have to put this foundational color, and then we have to bring more colors in to help it get that more of a golden brown hue. Are you familiar with that word hue? Hue basically means color. So when someone refer refers to a hue, an H-U-E, they're basically calling it a color, a light hue, a dark hue. That's simply a color. Okay. Almost done with getting this foundational color in. Let's get a little bit more. I'm working a lot faster than you would on yours, and that's okay because the idea is you're going to go back, you're going to rewatch, you're going to rewind, you're going to say, oh, I want to see that one scene again, how she drew that face, how she made that mane. How did she make that golden brown up on the top of the head? Well, you're going to be able to go back and do that. You're going to say, oh, I see, she just took some brown and she started layering the brown in. Oh, I can do that. You know, just go in there and you're just going to make it your own. If you want to make it more of an orangey lion, because honestly, if you look at this guy, he's got plenty of orange in his mane. I didn't really bring out an orange per se. So I might look over here in my color pencil kit and say, you know what? I think I could use an orange. I think we could bring a little bit of an orange tone 
to the um, main. Give it a little more richness. Shouldn't all be in the browns. So I'm gonna layer some orange in here. But I'm always gonna go back to, um, it's gonna sharpen my pencil, browns and golden yellows. This is just a hand crank pencil sharpener. I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna build up the browns again because I definitely feel like there's a lot of brown right near the face. Lots of brown. Then it goes out. So I'm gonna build up that brown. I'm gonna get a little more intense with the colors. Because again, we put some foundational colors down so it's easier to go back and just add another layer. I know I definitely want to get some of that red brown in that I had. So I'm going to find that color right here, give that a quick sharpening. And I'm also going to, oops, a little more sharpening action here. And I'm going to go back in and give that some reddish brown. Really like that color. And work my way down the mane. And you could just step back once in a while from your picture to really get a good idea of where am I with this? Is this where I want it to be? Do I need more yellows? Do I need more oranges? Where do I need more color? So let's keep going. I'm gonna layer more of the brown, a bit more of the orange, I think. And you're gonna to wanna to take this much slower than me. I'm really pushing myself to work, quick, work quickly to be able to show you everything I wanna show you, but then, to, so you understand what to do. I don't wanna take up all your time either. So I'm gonna put some orange in here. Orange glow too, not just a brown glow, but a nice mix of oranges, yellows, and browns, like that. Now we're getting down to the bottom here, and we're going to be right near that beard, what I would call the beard of the lion. So let's quickly layer some more of this golden yellow. And guess what? That beard is going to have a nice golden yellow hue to it. Remember that word I was just telling you about? Golden hue. The hue being the color, so a golden color to it. Come over here. Like this. Put a little bit more of that red brown in. Oh, wrong one. This is the one I wanted to really warm up the mane. And we're almost there. Almost, almost there. Now I'm going to just really go a little extra dark with that beard to really pop it bit more and that really is pretty much what I'm gonna do with this I think I like where it is touch it up a little here 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 and here now let's take a look are we happy with where it is whoops I'm pretty happy with where it is I like that and then you could go in and say oh hmm I missed a couple areas here I could really touch that up and that's easy to do when you get a different point of view of your picture. So I'm going to say, oh, gee, got to touch up some of those areas of the mane when I was working so fast before. Now, as a compliment, I want to use a really pretty uh, green color I have here. It's like a, like a sea foam green, but it's so, so pretty. So I'm going to use that. Whoops. I may actually have the wrong one. I think I do. Let me check here. It's kind of a seafoam green, similar to this color. 
but I think it's a little bit, yeah, this is the one I like. This is the one I like. Yep. This one's actually called Light Aqua. So I'm just going to use that Light Aqua and I'm gonna start up here and I'm just gonna give it a really light coloring all over and around my lion. Now this is gonna go on the background where it's folded, as you can see here. But it's also going to continue inside where um, it's unfolded. So you're gonna to wanna to take whatever color you choose. I like this color because it's a cool color and I think it's a nice contrast to all the warm browns and yellows. So you got the warm brown, yellow, orange, and you got the cool green, which is a great contrast. So I'm gonna stop there, let you go ahead and pick the color you want. <clears throat> Make sure you open up the whole card and get down the side of your lion head and then we'll get back together again and look at our finished piece. Have fun coloring in the rest of your okay. life. Okay, here we are back again at this point. I hope that you've had the time to color in your Barbary Lion. You have finished the mouth, the mane, the beautiful details in the teeth and the tongue, and the beard. And then you had a chance to choose a color. As I told you, I chose a very cool color called uh, Light Aqua to contrast with all the warm colors. And now you're ready to fold up your card and surprise your friends with your really super cool expanding lion face card. So I hope you enjoyed the program today. My name is Doris Benter from Library Arts and I hope that I can join you in the future again sometime. Take care.